Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand clock distribution or clock routing. And in this clip, we will also understand the edge tree architecture and driver trees. We know that the clock which is generated needs to be distributed to different points on my chip. Let's take a classic example of this is the block or this is the IC which has so many receiver points which all needs to be driven by clock. In the previous clip, we have already seen that if there are a lot of receiver points which needs to be driven by clock and they are all present at different, different lengths from the clock, then we know that delay tau is proportional to L square and there will be a problem of clock skew because two receiver points might not receive its clock at the same time. So what we will do is we will try to reduce a problem by not driving individual receiver points but try to group the receiver points and then think about a solution of driving the group in such a way that all the groups receive the clock at the same time. So suppose all of this are my receiving points of the clock. What I have done here is I have tried to group all of them into a group of four as an example and now I have four groups which I need to drive. Understand this distribution and clock routing is a very challenging phenomena which happens in the routing when you do physical design and that specifically when you do routing this becomes quite challenging. Here we are trying to just understand in terms of layman how exactly we should try to avoid this problem. So one, we understood that there are a lot of points present, correct, that needs to be driven. We should not drive it individually because all receiver points will get a difference due to the length of the interconnect on the clock which is received by themselves. So we started grouping them here. We have shown the groups of four and now I have started internal routing or I started routing all these four points internally which means that I drew vertical lines and try to make some connections and then, so if you see, I made this connection vertically. This also I did it. This also I did it. So I tried to internally route all my points such that my clock which needs to be driving this group should be able to drive all the groups at the same time. However, you see that I'm not able to achieve complete horizontal or in this case, complete vertical connections because all these points are randomly placed. So grouping it randomly is not technically going to help us quite a lot. What we learned from this was we should not drive individual blocks. We should try to make them in a group and try to drive the group. But then because they are so randomly placed that internally inside the group also to route the clock would be very challenging because they are not completely in the vertical dimension or in the horizontal dimension. They are scattered all over. Similar to grouping, we also have a concept called as partitioning where again very similar this is my points or this are my receiver points where I first partition it in the horizontal direction so I have two groups now then I partition it action so I have four groups now correct now I have started making a two point group so I have started making groups in such a way that you see here I have made a horizontal partition so this is a two point group this is a two point group again the same here two point group two point group again the same here two point group two point group and so on and so forth but again, you see that the points are so randomly placed. What we tried to achieve differently from grouping here was there were a lot of points that needs to be driven. I connected and made a group or I partitioned and made a group of four from group of four. I made a group of two so that it's easier if they are in the horizontal orientation or the vertical orientation. We know that if they are both in this direction or both on this direction, if I put a clock here, it will be equidistant. So the length would be the same. And I tried achieving that but the points are so random that the results are going to be nearly the same to the grouping technique. So again, we might partition in horizontal and vertical directions but it's not going to yield quite a different result from grouping and hence this itself is not a very good idea. So let's presume that somehow I got this four points which I need to drive and inside that four points I have blocks which are placed in such a way or grouped or partitioned in such a way that they are aligned to each other either in the vertical direction or in the horizontal direction then what I need to do is I need to have my clock circuit sitting here or it's like this suppose these are my four blocks say block one block two block three and block four then I'll put my clock circuit here so that all these four points are equidistant and then internally this four groups can drive another four groups as well 
So basically what we are coming up to is nothing but an edge tree architecture. Let's understand this. 